How are we doing, everybody? Oh, need to fix my wee camera, sorry. I'll put my wee door open as well. Nice little Friday stream there, guys. I've been kind of half meaning. Sorry for that. Love my beard. <laughs> been kind of half wanting and fancy, and maybe a wee Friday stream maybe replaces something else, maybe it just happens on occasion. Um, Sorry for the creaky chair. It's long on my shopping list of things I need to get. Um, <laughs> But um, we've got the Turkish League on boarding, so we're going to do a kind of what's going to happen in the stream today, guys, right? Is we're going to do like a superficial overview of the Turkish Super League. The clubs are here. The clubs aren't here is interesting as well. Um, we'll have a quick glance through, let's show our data, the market. We'll just kind of chat it out. And, uh, you know, anything else you, you want to talk about, also fire that away. Um, then I'll I'll come off live for maybe about 10, 20 minutes, go get some lunch or whatever. Then I'll be coming back, members only. We'll be diving in with the Y Scout and going uh, deep diving on Turkey. So, kind of a little different Friday take. And, um, you know, because I've been kind of playing in my mind to maybe do something on a Friday, whenever we have big stuff happen on a Friday, like a new launch or anything, I'm only going to play this for 20 seconds or something, right? But the beginning of this song always just pops into my head. Yeah. What up? This is Dr. Trey. The party's going on. <laughs> Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> Get to movie. This is from. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Just pure, puts me in the mood for a good Friday, man. And ding, 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 dong. And it's one of those Fridays, guys. Keep their heads ringing. 15 clubs, plenty for us to be going through. Um, also as well, I've been kind of meaning to do a video on this for a little while and I'm actually just going to start the stream off with it um, just to kind of do it and have a bit of fun with it before we get stuck into some of the other stuff, okay? So, um, as you guys will know, I've like got stuff from Genuino in the past and we've spoke about that stuff. I recently, with some of the packs they had out, I went and bought 10 packs. I'm just going to open them. I know there's some challenges and stuff on the go. I think I can still get like match-worn shirts and stuff like that in these packs. I just don't think it's as, as likely. Um, so, I'm just going to open them and... Ooh. Interesting. See what happens. Very cool experience, eh? Nice. Five cars. Let's see how long this takes. Okay, it's a unveil me, baby. Yeah, sure, let's see it. Boom. That's a cool away jersey. I like that. Oh, we've got something here. So what's that from City? We also have the third jersey from this year. I think this I'm not able to scroll all the way up, so I can't actually see the scarcity on them. Um, as I use my scroller, it's moving me left to right, which is fun, but I can't go any, oh, I can go further up, there we go, so that's an elite, so that's something quite cool, um, and now the mouse scrolling that way is becoming a bit more useful, this is quite cool, okay, magic, that's a cool little kind of jokery kind of card, I suppose, I can get behind that in terms of artwork or whatever, uh, a fourth jerk from 1960, cool. the badge is a bit wonky, I don't know if that's on purpose or what, An Italy Cup from 2001. Nice. Is that all the cards I got in this pack? Cool. So it's five per pack. Okay, it would seem. Um, now, how do I scroll down to like go to the next? No, proceed. Open a new pack. Let's just do that. Nine left. That should get easier, hopefully. Let's just click that thing. Ooh, good fun, isn't it? Good morning, Luca. Thanks a lot for joining us. Chrissy Quirk, fist bump. Good to see you, my man. Back at Stias is good. Granted, won't be on just yet. Yeah, make you. Oh, I don't know. Nothing for about that guy. But yeah, sounds good, Chrissy. Right, so let's see. What have we got? Unveil me, baby. Another one of those jerseys. So I don't know if I'm getting doublers. It's hard to tell. Yeah, I think I am getting some doublers. Which is fine. I guess I can sell them. The marketplace is now open as well. And say there's kind of missions on the go, so I think it's like collect X amount of different levels, like a pro, five elites, or something like that. Skeletto, nice! That must be good for something. Brilliant, and maybe the number one is that the first Skeletto that they won? That's quite cool. Um, I watched, you know, part of the I wanted to actually open this for you guys is because um, I was listening to Gary V. Guys, like, Gary V did an interview with Mark Zuckerberg, like, 12 hours ago or something on his YouTube channel. Go and check it out. Highly recommend it. They're talking about Metaverse and all that cool stuff. And um, 
it got me hyped. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it got me hyped. <laughs> when fucking Zuckerberg and Facebook and that are sniffing about all this stuff, man, you know, it's just gonna become the norm much quicker. You know, that's just my point of view on a lot of this stuff. Um, when you hear about what they're talking about, metaverses, augmented reality, virtual reality, that's when, like, having some of these cool things, like, um, we'll come back to, to show something. Now, if, granted, I'm not a big Fiorentina fan, but the thing about Gen Nuino is the, the physical, digital kind of combo that they do. So I'm happy to watch them as they go. Rumour is there's a new club on the horizon from Twitter Spaces that was on last week. I don't think it was well attended, so that's probably not widely known. There's a wee one for you. I'm just getting a bunch of shirts. They're all quite cool, I suppose. If I had like, a digital hangout, you know, or something like that in the metaverse, then I suppose I could just have them covered in Fiorentina shirts. That would be kind of cool. Um, maybe in some sort of mosaic or something. Simo, good to see you, my man. This won't take too much longer, guys. And then we'll get stuck into Turkey. Gives a good chance for some of you guys to catch up. If you're watching this after we've been live, there's a good chance I'll be timestamping this. So if you don't want to watch any more of the pack opening or whatever, you probably have that ability to just skip ahead. Uh, so I'm just getting a lot of I'm getting a lot of nice jerseys and stuff like that. Italian Cup matches, Serie A home win against Lazio. A lot of rookies and pros. I don't really know what the missions are because I've not I'm not a big Discord guy like um is any of you guys that are in servers with me will know. I've got that Scudetto again. I think I've got this as a pro now. I think the last one I had was a rookie. So I think that's a better Scudetto. And I see a lot of people pulling these cards. This is the first one I've got. The kind of caricature, like playing card style. I've had, obviously, two of the kind of Da Vinci style drawn one that looks like a Joker. But that's my first kind of caricature looking one. Don't really know the full significance of this game. Um... I have also had an offer in already with the marketplace being open for my physical jersey that I'm yet to redeem. Um, and I'm not going to be selling it for the price it came in. But it's good to see that it's kind of available now. The marketplace, you can make bids, you can go and buy a shirt. Like, maybe I'll try and trade my shirt for a better player. Oh, Women's Italy Cup Final. Nice. And that's pro. That's a nice looking uh, cup. Oh, a nice bit of silverware. A nice cup. And that no, one more. Yeah, it was quality with the... Yeah, if you haven't watched the Gary Vee thing, I definitely recommend it. It seems like Chrissy Quirk's caught it. I was glued to it for like half an hour this morning. I made up most of my morning. It put me in a super good mood. And then obviously all this turkey stuff came out. And I'd bought all these Genuino packs like a week ago. I spent maybe about 60 quid on the... It was like a fiver a pack. I think I had an airdrop once. I think I only actually bought nine. But uh, the way it deposits... It deposits through ramp as well. So I put like £100 in. Oh, this is one of the cool shirts I've seen talking about. Italy, Italy Supercoppa, 2-1 win against Milan. That's a nice jersey. That's from the 90s as well. That'll be some vintage stuff. I've, yeah, I think I've seen one of these Twitter accounts that do retro shirts, maybe giving that away or something. I've got another Women's Cup. So I'm able to sell this stuff. And maybe like people will see what I've got and maybe it's just some offers will come my way and I'll be able to collect some x die, which is another cryptocurrency that I know zero about, but... Cool. I've got another one of these caricature ones. I'm starting to collect them now. Um, which is cool. And I've got another one. I'm feeling a lot of doublers. Four packs left. I'm feeling a lot of doublers. There's only five per pack. And I understand there will be a limited kind of berth on how much is a, how much they can actually make. So it's worthwhile. It's great experience, but in terms of the graphics, the visuals, it is a, a very good pack opening, considering how small the platform is and how young it is, you know. Can't wait to see who the next license could be as well. Um, because again, with like authenticated, match-worn, signed jerseys, if you've got an accompanying NFT that does that, for me that's a game breaker, you know, like buying match-worn shirts and signed shirts and that kind of stuff is great, but depending on the source is a massive factor in the price and the credibility, of course, of the item. And having like a digital certificate, like an NFT company, it's got a tag on it. There'll be an app that will be able to track it all. They've got the technology to do all this stuff. It's, it's game changing for that little small market, but very valuable. And, you know, imagine one day in like 10 years from now, if they've got a relationship with like the biggest clubs in the world, you're talking about Real Madrid and Man United. You know, even if it's just once a season, you would get something. You know, like I've seen Celtic like, auction shirts off for charity, and clubs do lots of stuff like that nowadays, you know, to engage with fans. And, uh, this yeah i like it basically if case, i'm just explaining this in case you're wondering what the hell's going on and what i'm doing so i've got a physical jersey that's an nft also 
I'm not going to show you that today. There's another video. You find it dead easy. Just search or on my channel. You'll see it's. I've only done like two videos talking about it. I don't get paid for any of it. It's not like you know. It's, it's just a cool project that approached me, and I think it's well cool. Impact's life. I'm not seeing anything amazing just yet. But we'll finish this up with the last couple of cards and then we'll get diving right into it. Again, yeah, just a lot of jerseys. I'm not, nothing's really grabbed me yet. Like, I've seen some people have, like, inter total cup winning shirts and that kind of thing. I'm not, I might have missed it. But I'm just seeing, like, a lot of kind of normal event things. I'm not looking at, like, if I get one like, cup finals and stuff like that, I think that's right cool. There we go. It like, cup doesn't say final. So 531, that's something. It's elite, which is cool. Yeah, pack. Let's see what we get. The screen frozen? Uh oh. Maybe just how big this uh this like opening experience is, like my streaming quality unfortunately when I'm doing highly intuitive stuff isn't great. So this will just be the last little bit for it. And then we'll get out of here. But I've had good fun opening these. Um yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of a lot of doubles, man. I don't... <laughs> wow. I don't know if I'm going to be completing any of these missions unless it is like collect like rookie pro and elite versions of like one thing, then I might have that. Uh, there we go. Rookie pro elite on the Scudetto thing. So maybe that's something. I probably, I'll probably i probably hang on to them. They're my favourite ones I've pulled. If that is the first Scudetto that they won, then yeah, I'm actually quite a fan of this NFT, especially this one. Yeah, I like that a lot. Quality. So I think I'm going to close this off if the stream's kind of frozen, it's got a bit laggy. And then this should all improve. So this is the post right now. The Twitter uh, announcement that so rare did, what minute are we at? 15.30. I'm going to put on this so I can timestamp it later. 15.30. Sorted. Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> um, it's very important because the detail here, all the clubs that are actually licensed at the moment and their current position. Now, the very first thing you're going to notice straight away is there is no Besiktas, okay? They do kind of say down here, Fenerbahce and Galatasaray will relaunch much anticipated very soon with more new Turkish clubs coming. Now, there is only 20 teams in the league. We have two already. We now have an additional 15. I guess it's to 17. So the remaining three, one, of course, is Besiktas. Nobody else here is jumping out at me as a glaring omission. So I'm thinking with the size of the league and the quality of the bottom half of the division as a neutral outsider, I wouldn't be surprised if the remaining two clubs were just like really part-timer clubs or whatever that managed to get their way in and, you know, maybe they've maybe not got a marketing department to make this happen or whatever. Who knows? It could be. But I think Besiktas will come in line with Fenerbahce and Galatasaray. Now, the reason, guys, just to make you all aware, if you are relatively new, when Fernabache first came on, it was in Galatasaray, it was a big deal. It was like the biggest Twitter response ever to like club onboardings that we had. And at that point we'd already had Real, PSG, Liverpool, Bayern, etc. So um the Turkish fans love their football <laughs> and uh, they get right behind it. So I made a video at some of the, you know, maybe you've seen it or whatever, but your club has joined so rare kind of thing, what now? And the Turkish guys bring it, you know, they are very passionate and I think we're going to get a lot more information coming out of Turkey. And like I said recently on podcasts and that kind of stuff, as uh, Turkey's, for me, it's now going, it's going to become the meta. It's going to become the, it's going to become the main strategy for Challenger Europe. It's got the most generous calendar. It's got the most teams. We're not quite there with the most teams licensed because we've not got the remaining pieces yet. But it should become that quite soon and I think you're going to find a lot of people build their global and their challenger don't know if there's too much under 23 real action going on here to be honest but global and challenger kind of base little spine foundation pieces are all going to be or a lot of them are going to be coming out of Turkey coming up uh, soon so we'll have a little kind of superficial glance over it so I'm just going to look at the auction and just see what kind of super rares and uniques and rares in particular because obviously they're all going to be getting limited okay but what I want to see is um what rares etc are coming out because they do tend to prioritize the ones on their information now where so rare get their information from it's kind of unknown it does it come from the clubs like oh this is our star player now this guy's got the biggest shirt sales is it from like opta itself is it from you know, maybe so rare data <laughs> that kind of thing you know but they definitely do try and prioritize better players getting uh better scarcity or higher value scarcity cards out quite quickly 
Um, so it's interesting just to see because now the velocity of the rare auctions has been down so much over the last two months since the introduction of limiteds in comparison to before, that getting a rare auction quite quickly, I think, gives them some sort of credibility. There is a bit of alphanumeracy going on here, like I suppose there is a lot of A's and whatever. And maybe the super rares is probably the most important aspect of this angle that I'm talking about. Ronaldo Mendes. 28, it's not going to excite too many people. DNP and it was mind. Yeah, maybe yeah, it's just random. But I do I do like to look at this and we'll see what comes of it, you know. Um, it's like a kind of good once over. What I'll do after this is I'll dive into so rare data and we'll maybe punch up some teams looking at latest 11s. See if there's any familiar names. Like I've seen Ahmed Musa now. Ahmed Musa is, of course, most famously of Leicester City. I think he's been sold, not looked into it, so check that out for yourself. Um, but yeah, he's a good scorer, and he's one of these guys. Like, I've not looked at his, his but he's a he's twenty eight. He's formerly of CSKA Moscow, so he's definitely um, got it in him to adapt to. Let's just call it a rural challenger league. You know, it's not like big Western like Spain, France, England, Italy, that kind of thing. You know. So um, even though his L5s are a bit up and down or whatever, he's a goal scorer. If he scores over 20 goals in the season or over 15, whatever you would project for a guy like him, then he could be good because you know who he is as well. And he's 28. Maybe he moves from Turkey to Portugal or, you know, something like that. Back to Russia, maybe. So got a good chunk of his career to go. Our boy Muric gets another card. And I've got to say, I actually like this card much better than the Heerenveen one. I think the shirt's a bit cooler. I think the pose, I, I, I don't know. This just looks like a cool card to me. Like... I don't know if um, it's the whole team. I know it's the Argentinos Juniors. I actually quite... Oh, Jesus. I've zoomed in way too much. The Argentinos Junior... Oh, Jesus. The Argentinos Junior cards. I've lost my filter now. Oh, Jesus. Um, I like the kind of pose that they stand in. So a long thing that I've been waiting to get, guys, as you'll know, is um, a challenger goalkeeper. And I've been saying for a long time that Turkey is really where I want to be going. And now, finally, I've got my pick of the letter. So I'm going to be looking for myself for another cheap goalkeeper like the Argentina guy that I picked up the other day. Um, and then I think width-wise, you know, in terms of like, you know, I can get some... So I've got a lot of super rares knocking about that don't really fulfil competitive teams because of the goalkeepers I've got and whatever. So I think if I get a challenger Euro keeper in that is 023, that means Schubert and Van der Voort can be like exclusive U23 goalkeepers for me and I'm never tempted to go oh maybe I should just play challenger because I've got Yakimakis, I've got Kyogo I've got a lot of ex-city I've got a lot of nice challenger cards that predominantly play global but on occasion I've got enough of them that maybe I should be trying my hand in a challenger region whether it be rare or rare pro or D4, D3 Alexandru Maxim feels like a name I should recognise Um, I might say Stuttgart I don't know if I made that up um, I'm going to keep it zoomed in until I see Muric again. Um, because that's why I zoomed in. To look at his, you know, As I'm looking at the rest of these guys, they are all looking dead on, pretty much. But look at uh, Muric. This looks like out of a computer game or something. It looks like a really good rendering of a photo, but it looks like he's like... I don't know. It's not quite an action shot, but it's it's weird, isn't it? It's a wee bit different. The reason I like this guy is he's on loan from Man City, and I've got a bit of a thing for that in my club. He's starting to play now. He was out the team. He is only on loan, so I'm not going to pay top dollar for him because who knows where he goes next season and who knows if he even keeps his place this year, you know. Should have picked him up. He was getting down to like point two ish There we go. That should do me. He was getting down to two ish about um, three weeks ago or so and I should have just bit the hand off and got him, but I didn't. I'm seeing Hakimi there and yeah, books. Are, this filters came off again. This is so annoying. Right, let's just go on to... Um, Oh, I had a second window open, sorry, that might have been part of the, the bug. Um, right, so let's try this for the last time. I'm going to hit favourites and see if I have any guys that come up here that I've maybe favourited in the past, that I've forgotten about or whatever. Uh, Shappy? Shappy's in Turkey? Ooh! Munir Shap. Oh, this little kid, by the way, I don't know how good he is, but... This guy used to have a wee bit of a following back in the day. Let's have a look at him. Yeni Metalia Spore. This little kid's got tricks, man. He's very, he's a very skillful player. L5 doesn't look good. Let's check him out on uh, data. I'm just going to copy and paste it from here. Hopefully it works. Um, I don't think he's going to be a great player or anything, but if he's playing first-team football... 
it wasn't hyped as high as Cherky or anything, but it was kind of like in that kind of gang, if you like. Yeah, he's not a great scorer. He's got tricks. He's like a dribbler, like silky, highlight reel type of guy. Um, from, well, maybe he goes cheap. The one off is going to be the most expensive, probably. Um, is there a fucking bit that's going to win? I don't have many favourites, but that's actually an interesting little detail I managed to catch, which is cool. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at Sawyer data. So, I'm going to, this feels very zoomed in. There we go, that's better. Right. Let's uh, check some teams. Okay, so I'm going to have a look at the division itself. I know Sawyer actually, let's just go back to the Sawyer data post. Because they actually list everyone in their positions. Now there's a couple of small clubs that are actually flying quite high in the division at the moment. And I say small. So what I'm going to also do is I'm going to put on my phone in front of me the now uh, the standings from last year. Because uh, Turkey's had enough competitive fixtures where the standings this season to me are definitely meaningful. In terms of trying to judge the team, how well they're going, how well could they do for the rest of the year. I think we've got enough of a sample size, 12 matches in, out of a 38-game season. Not even a third of the way through, really, when we think about it, just about getting there. Um, So, yeah. So, I'm going to look at last season and compare. So, the top three from last year was the big three, and then number four was Trabs and Spore. Now, where are Trabs and Spore this season? That's probably where I'm going to want to start my journey here. Trabs and Spore... I don't see them. So we don't have Trabs and Spore. This season, where are they? Now, they are one of the bigger teams. Oh, they're actually top at the moment. So we don't have Trabs and Spore. I'm going to make a note of that. Um, so that goes out the theory. <laughs> um, and then it was a little rural farm club which maybe made its way up. It's actually Trabs and Spore. One of the more famous teams for sure. And uh, so we're yet to get them. Um, bum, 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 bum. And then Siva Sport and Hataya Sport were fifth and sixth, respectively. Hataya Sport are second, and Siva Sport are fifteenth. So I'm going to be looking at Hataya Sport next. Okay, so um, let's just do this. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's have a look at what Sawyer Data has given us. So if they're second and out, and they finished like top five last year, they must have some good stuff going for them. Um, on my phone, I'm using flash scores. I'm just going to kind of click into them and see if I recognise anyone at a glance. It doesn't list their manager, so I'm going to be interested to find out who their manager is. The goalkeeper actually came up um, at my first glance before jumping live or anything. He is 32, but, you know, he looks okay. Uh, Score-wise, and if he goes cheap enough, I might go pick him up. <coughs> Looks like they've got a good right back here. Centre backs look okay. Adama Traore, not the one that you're thinking. But there's no huge scorers here. Mami Briam Diouf, of course, from with Man United is in the team. So if you're a Man United fan, that could be an easy little card to get your gallery up and running for Global D4, or Global Rare, or whatever. Limited 5, whatever we're calling all the divisions these days. Um, but I wonder if. So let's have a look at Ruben Ribeiro. He is 34. So when I'm doing this kind of stuff, guys, I try not to let the age affect it too much because sometimes, yeah, this guy's decent. Do you know what I mean? I know he is 34, but if he's going to keep playing and they're second in the league, he's obviously would have been a big part of them. Let me check him out from last year. What's his name? Ruben Ribeiro. Number seven. He is 34. Last year, 37 games, one goal, one assist. So 11 yellow cards, two reds. Wow, the guy likes a booking, doesn't he? Um... So he's got, yeah, he's just got a good AA game in terms of triple triples, obviously, and, you know, that kind of thing. He's going to be racking them up. Because the decisives, as we scroll down, yeah, they're all 35s. This guy's just an all-rounder. And if he can get the decisive up, yeah, 34. You know, if you get him cheap enough, that's something to think about, for sure. Very unfancy team on paper, you know, but finished from fifth last year and where they're at the now. Uh, let's look at the wider, uh, the wing players. So this guy's 26. Lobjanji. Lobjanji. Lobjanidze, is that what it is? Lobjanidze. So this guy's Georgian, so Hendo has definitely got a semi already. Um, he has just featured for Georgia 80 minutes in the last match. He's listed as a forward on flash scores. Uh, so far in this guy's career, wow, this season he's actually doing really, really well. Four goals and five assists in 11 games. He wasn't at them last year. He's kind of been around Europe with Tbilisi, Randers, who are in Denmark, and formerly of Angaraku, who is also a Turkish team. This guy is actually quite interesting and could be very handy for Global or Challenger. 
on the face of it. It's having a good season and it's the decisives that are getting them 65, so his all round game must be pretty naff. Definitely seems to be that way. He's a decisive only guy, but depending on how cheap he goes for, if you like the Georgians, he's played 80 minutes in the last game. And for Georgia, yeah, he's got quite a fair amount of caps. He's played six times in World Cup qualification in this campaign. And he's got some Euros experience, International Cups. He's played Europa League twice. Don't know who that's for. But he could be interesting. As I look at the squad list, I wonder if there's anyone else that looks interesting that may not be here. So there's a Belgian guy by the name of Mohamed Merit who jumps out, but his career is not really much to speak of, to be quite honest. Isaac Sake is a number five from Ghana who's out injured at the moment. And his career, he's actually normally a starter and he's came through Saki, his name is. I'm going to check him out on So Rare Data. So that's S A C K E E. S A C K E Y. I beg your pardon. First name Isaac. This guy's injured now. This guy could be somebody that's maybe under the surface that will auction really low. Yeah, he's got one rare minted. So, you know, if he's not playing his L5's DNP, he's not going to attract too much attention. Doesn't look like he's actually got that great a score, to be honest with you. Um, all round can be there. That's a nil nil draw away, um, and that's a thirty five. So when you see the twenty five all round score, that means they've come off the bench or they've done something bad, probably. But most likely they came off the bench. So when you see the the decisive being twenty five, you're trying to discount and mitigate against them, and you're looking for the all round scores when you've got a decisive of 35 that's what you're trying to marry up here so in a 4-1 win away he can you know he can do it if he's getting the minutes he can do it not that he definitely does it but he could be a wee injury play um uh a guy called popov is in this team 31 he's not been playing you always just look because in a turkey like country there in uh, in a country like turkey they are limited to how many foreign nationals they can have in their squad so the foreign nationals you have to look at them because they have decided to give them a spot in their team in a similar way with MLS and their DPs and under-23s projects and that kind of stuff. So um, that's why I've had a look at those guys. Let's go back. Is there anyone else in this team that we might want to have a glance at? I think uh, Lob needs it. I say he looks good, but he is decisive dependent, it appears. Uh, because he's listed as a midfielder on this, but according to flash scores, he's a forward. So make of that what you will. Ayub El Kabe, let's check him out. Ayub El Kabe has uh, played a lot this year. 11 games, 5 goals, 1 assist. Last year with Wyad, I'm guessing they're in the Middle East somewhere. He did well, 2 seasons with them. Hebei before them, which is China. So this guy is actually quite interesting because if this guy like, transfers around the world and stuff, like he can score well and if he ends up in a boss league like China or something again at some point or somebody else has scored you know he could have a nice interesting little career so El Cabe if you got him for buttons double A yeah so this is a forward yeah I mean, let's have a look at some of these scores. He's not going to have much here. So, um, he's got a whole round score of minus four in the last game. They lost 1 0. I want to check that out if that's bookings or whatever. Um, but yeah, all round is quite minimal. He's had one game where he's managed to push it up quite high. But yeah, it feels like a decisive, decisive dependent guy. Also, but for forwards, you know, you kind of expect that with most of them anyway. But if he is playing wide, which so rare data would suggest he is. And he could be interesting. Okay, so let's go back and look at the teams again. So Hataya Spore was the first one that was worth a little glance. Um, let's have a look who else would kind of pop up. Super superficial. I'm trying to keep this, you know, like just who would be the kind of obvious ones. So I'm going to look on um, form last season, <clears throat> last ten. See if Spore had really good form finishing the season out, which is probably a big reason for why they finished where they did. Hataya Spore's form actually fell off last ten games of last season. Um, home form last season and Karangu, have we got them? No, we don't. Aliana Spor, yep, they're fifth this season. And where did they finish overall last year? Seventh. Okay, so they're going to be interesting. And I think this is the team that Etu played for. Uh, so I, I kind of recognise their badge from like FIFA. So I don't know if they had maybe you know you know as a stage you know, you know it's like on FIFA you know when you get the 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 ex top five league guys that end up in Turkey they end up recognizing a badge or two 
I think this is Eto's team. So let's see who they've got. They kind of went super interesting. At first glance, no recognisable names, but of course the first thing your eye gets drawn to is your boy Freddy here. He's 31. Let's have a look at Freddy. So the reason this is kind of what I would say popping out to me is they're a strong home team. Now, this guy Freddy, I don't see him listed. Oh, maybe I've clicked on the wrong team. So that's Antalaspor rather than... Al uh, no, it's the wrong team I've selected, sorry. But that guy is interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're fifth. Yeah, it's this team here. This guy is interesting, so we'll we'll look at him quickly, right? <laughs> uh, not some other players, sorry. 31 for this team. Ooh, yeah, he's tasty. Yeah, we like this guy. I think we'll be looking at Freddy. You've got another Brazilian with a cool kind of name like that, eh? Uh, Itamar, you bring up an amazing point. What about um, fixture difficulty? So that's a great point on the starts of the season and whatever so far. So I will look into that at some point. Um, but I say that now, I'll have a quick glance over. So he's actually listed that this has been Angolan, right? So I wonder if he plays national team. Um, maybe that's why I couldn't... Is he Angolan on this? Freddy? Oh no, he, I'm looking at the wrong team again, sorry. Um, it's the red and white badge. I don't know there, but down the bottom. Probably part. Of, sometimes being towards the bottom of the league can be good for all round scores because you are forced to win more tackles and stuff. Yeah, he's Angolan. Doesn't seem to have any. Yeah, he does have some. Yeah, starts for them. So if, if ever Angola are in any national teams, wow, this guy's stats are like decent, by the way. Like at a low level in Europe, if you know what I mean. So like um. A lot of appearances and some decent goal returns for Belenenses, if that's how you say it, in Portugal. And in a good few couple of seasons at this team with some good numbers. So I think I'll keep an eye on him. He has 31, so I'm expecting that he's not going to be too expensive. And he might just be a wee guy you put in the back burner. And... His name's Freddy, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's kind of easy to like uh, Brazilians like that, I think. You know, <laughs> they've got a cool name or funny haircut or something. It can help. So this is the team I really want to look at, okay? So this is the team with a good home form. And I think maybe he has played for this team as well. I don't think I recognise any of these names. Daniel uh, Candea, this is formerly of Rangers. He's on the bench. Oh, Kuma Babakar. I used to love buying him on Football Manager when he was like 18 or something. Don't know what age he is now, but it was a long time ago. Koreki is in good form. Who does Koreki play for, Chrissy Quirk? Who's Koreki play for? I'm going to look at this guy, Efechan Karaka. So this is the... Yeah, I keep reminding myself, this is the good home team. 7th in the league last season, 5th in the league at the moment. Fixture is... Right, okay, so let's look at the results that they've had. So they've lost to Rizospor. They've beat Fenerbahce away, which, you know, I know Fenerbahce are doing great. They have also beat, wow, Galatasaray away this season. So this actually makes me well more excited about this team because that means even their hard fixtures coming up are going to be home games and they're good at home. So I like this. This is a, ooh, this could be something. This guy could be a killer, couldn't he? 31. So let's check him out. Efechan Kara or something like that. Efechan Karaka. 31. Gets into the Turkey team. He's not really picking up tons of minutes, but he does get in there. He's been at this team forever, basically. Goal and assist returns are minimal, but he's already done this season what he did last season in a third of the matches. So um, that's interesting. Does he then tail off? Does he continue and kick on? Quite like him at first glance. We bit of national team duty as well. Davidson or Davidson. This is a forward on this. 30. SO5 scores. Decisive dependent again, you've got to say. Dependent on minutes. Yeah, he's been getting starts. And yeah, he can get around 10 decisive if they're having a good game. 
But if they're not having a good game, oh, it's a draw, and he's like, yeah, he's okay. He not get me too excited. There must be somebody in this team. What about the goalkeeper, actually? Thirty six. Fuck. <laughs> Let's look at the goalkeeper situation. So, who's this guy? Crenatelli. So he's thirty six years old, which doesn't make me excited, especially with that string of DNPs behind him. Okay, so. Let's have a look into that. So he's been playing all of this season and all of last season he was on the bench. Now I want to check out who was playing when he was on the bench. Um, it was Marafona. Okay, now Marafona is currently in the squad because I've just seen his name. And Marafona at the moment is on the bench and he is 34. So it would seem... It would seem... He's been a number one goalkeeper his whole career thus far. Let's look at the third guy, Yusuf Karagoz. He's just been on the bench or not in the squad. He's 22. He's not got a first-team career to speak of. So this is, oh, his form is tailing off. So Marafona, his name is. The other guy, Marafona. Yes, I said that right. <laughs> just like Maradona. But with an F. <laughs> Marafona. He's also 34. <clears throat> Maybe I'll try and pick this guy up. I think his scores are really that bad. And it's saying he's DNP in here for being on the bench. So it feels like he just got dropped. Like, after a bad form. Yeah, the form leading up to being dropped was rotten. But this other guy's form's dropping off. So that's one to think about. Uh, Pattaya Spor is where Kareki plays. Okay, so I've maybe missed him. Or maybe I've looked at him and just forgot his name. Sorry. Oh, he's at Kareki even. Okay, sorry. Oh, you need to spell him with the... Funny Turkish letters. It's going to throw a lot of people off that whole, um, all their little inflections and stuff like that. There we go. Oh, this is the defender. Now, I'm not really. Oof, wow, yeah. He is good, Chrissy. Oof. He can get all rounds, man. He is good. I just look at space for a guy like this, but maybe you do. I think the goalkeeper situation is a bit too sketchy at uh, Alanya Spore. Looks like we have Juan Fran in defence. Is that Atletico Madrid Juan Fran? 33 it must be. No, it's not. Some other Juan Fran. <laughs> um, let's check out this Davidson guy. What's his career like? It's been, yeah. Nothing too amazing. Awizeme, the new signing for them is the best one of the team. Yeah, it just caught my eye. That, is it Nigerian or something? Awazemi. I'm pretty sure i just seen that name. Or was that the last team? Oh, he's in defence, that's why. Yeah, he is Nigerian. I've seen his name. Where did he come from? He's 24. He came from Boa Vista, who had a lot of real... Actually, this could be a good one. Awazeme. I was a wazzy M. Looking forward to international break being done. I don't have a line up yet. It's Brian, it is rotten. Brian Fistbump, thanks for joining us, my man. Um, it is rotten. Uh, yeah, this guy looks good, man. So I say Boa Vista had a joint owner. The owner of Boa Vista was also the owner of Lille. And the guy is, uh, I don't know, basically Boa Vista spent tons of money that was kind of Lille's money, I think, or whatever. And they're on their arse now, blah, blah, blah. So a 24 year old getting sold out of Boa Vista. Is, uh, who's formerly of Porto as well. It's definitely somebody played a full season at Nantes. I don't know what league that would have been in. Um, probably League 1. So yeah, he's a guy that's definitely worth considering also. And he, oof, all round of 45. That's significant. Done it twice. All round of 48. All round of 41. Yeah, this guy could be a killer. He's 24. Maybe he's under 23. Maybe he's one of those cheeky ones like Kevin McAllister. <laughs> I like that shirt. That is a cool shirt. We bit of camo in the middle, you know. We bit of black and orange. My kids would love that shirt. <laughs> my kids love camo, and my youngest kid loves the color orange, which is just weird. Um, for no real reason. Uh, but he's no, he's not U23, so he'd be a challenger or a, 
a global four guy. Um, but yeah, good at home. Nice defender. We like that. Davidson guy, the Kareka guy, they're okay. Uh, center mid, what was his name? Gumut or something? She's just going to go in circles there. Alan. Yeah. Spot. I think I'll look at one more club at this with you guys and then I'll love you and ladies and then I'll set up shortly and we'll go members only and uh, we'll dive in with Scout, see what stats we can pull out from there. But yeah, this guy here, I've got a feeling he... 21. Nice. I've got a feeling he's... I don't know why. I thought he was a Turkey International. Maybe he's a Turkey Youth International. Maybe that's why I've seen him because I think I've been looking at a fair bit. Oh, yeah. I like this guy. I like this guy. Formerly of Stuttgart. who got a good academy. The scores aren't great. How's he doing for minutes this year? A lot of 90s. An 83, 74. A lot of 90s. I like this guy. All round scores are very modest for a midfielder, it must be said. Well, there is some green shoots there, you know, like, he's a, definitely a guy you could sit on. If you get him cheap, or if you want him or something, you know, 21, form, you know, yeah. I like, I like the look of this kid. And then who is the other midfielder that accompanies him? According to Soria Dea. Axoy. He's also as a defender here. Which is an interesting detail. Let's see where I've got him on my phone. Sorry guys, I just realised how close my face is to the camera when I do this. Nice. He's also as a defender here. Not in the squad. He doesn't play very often. That's a weird one for so rare data to... Oh, is it Besiktas now? This guy's transferred to Besiktas. Sakoi. Hmm. Cool. Okay, so let's go back to the so rare thing again. And then let's try and find one more kind of interesting club that you've maybe never heard of that we can do a wee kind of superficial glance past on. So again, I'm looking at the table from last season. Um, and what else might I find interesting? Um, okay, so let's see. Form for the last 10 games. Teams that are high on that, they're also high the now. So they're maybe in a bit of an ascendancy or something like that. Um, Basa Shakir, I don't think we have them yet, do we? No, we don't. We really don't. Okay, so we don't have Basa Shakir again. I think they've quite famously had guys like uh, Dembaba, maybe Adebayor as well. And yeah, guys, so we don't have Basa Shakir, we don't have Trabs and Spore or Besiktas, they'll be the missing pieces. Um, Kara Gumruk were in good form towards the end of last season. And they're eighth this year, so I guess that's something. Kasim Passa. Form isn't even that great, even though I'm mentioning them. Sivaspor were the best, but Sivaspor started to... Let's see what Sivaspor's fixtures have been like this year. That will be interesting. Um, a lot of draws against all these other teams that have just kind of onboarded. They've lost away to Besiktas. They've drew away with Fenerbahce and a lot of, it's basically a lot of draws. They've not really been losing games. So that I like because that again can be overlooked very easily because quite simply people will see their 15th in the table and maybe look past them. But they finished the season quite strong and this season they've only actually lost one game it would appear from that run of form I just looked at. Um, let me just look at the league table again for this season. Uh, see the Spore. Yeah, they only lost once in the league this year. Oh no, twice. Sorry. Super League 1. No, no. 1, 2. They lost their first two games. And then since then, they've drawn like seven times. 1, 2, lost 1. So they've lost three times in the league all in. Um, whichever 12 matches is not really that bad a ratio. Hakan Arslan, I think I want to know, say I know him. Yeah, he's 33. I definitely know that. It's this guy. Formerly of Besiktas, I want to say. I think he used to be kind of okay in a FIFA once upon a time and maybe had a little German flag on him. It's all round game doesn't actually look that good. Don't know how he's doing for minutes. Let's see the art the see the sport squad on the little thing I'm using. See if any names jump out. Max Gradle's in this team. Um I've just seen a Chiffchi there, but it's not Nadir Chiffchi. Um, 
Uh, yeah, no names kind of jump out to me as anyone I know other than Max Gradle and then this guy here, Arslan. I can Arslan. Is this the guy I'm thinking of? Bashitas? No, it's not. Just another guy called Arslan. Never, I've never heard of this guy before. It would, it would uh, appear to be. Let's have a look at who they've got here. Uh, so who's jumping? Nobody really. Pedro Henrique obviously has an attractive name because you think, oh, that guy must be Brazilian or something. And he is. Let's click on him. He's 31. His career is long and storied. He's played in Switzerland for three years, France in three, and then Turkey, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Greece, Turkey, Turkey. So he's been kind of a bit of a nomad. I'm not really going to pay him much attention. Max Gredo is 33. I wonder how his stats are looking. Where's the number seven? He's probably on big wages. Yeah, he plays like a lot. Um, He's been there last year. Wow, 11 goals and 13 assists. This year he's only got two and two, but they have been drawing. So has he been playing as well? Yeah, he has been playing. So I think when they do click, if they do, if they click, oh yeah, Max Gradle could be one to look at. Now again, he's 33. So this is a mid, which is very interesting actually. Um, because if he is playing wing, and he's playing mid, then decisive getting, yeah, 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 yeah. Decisive getting midfield cards can be powerful and again some of these guys all everyone we've looked at is over 23 and i don't think in this league that's where you're going to do your shopping for your 23 by and large i think you're after your solid cheap pieces here that do the job you know on the occasion and when they do bang they bang you know because look at this yeah i mean if he gets into a run of form if you look at from like here the 87 so that at one point is our last five at 87 85 65 76 if you play that guy in five game weeks there You'll come out with something again here. It's punches and bunches. 76 on the bench. 87, 82, 45, 70. You know, punches and bunches. Guys like that can be useful because once you feel the form coming, the tap gets turned on, you know. Um, and yeah, 33. How many seasons are you going to get out of him? I would only forecast for the rest of the season and then anything beyond that, of course, is a Brucey bonus. Um, nobody else's stats really jump out to me here as being particularly attractive. I'm going to look at the league quickly. Top goal scorers. Um, and it's the guy at Trabs and Spore that Chris had mentioned earlier, Bacasteus, the Greek guy. We've also got a guy, Bertolacci, at I don't know what that team is called, so it's just an abbreviation, but we'll check him out. Bertolacci, his name makes me want to think that he's a fullback. Bertolacci, a 30 year old midfielder, he's got the scores. But we know he's getting a lot of decisives at the moment. Uh, his career, <sighs> backup player at. Right, okay, so first team player for Genoa for three seasons. He's got appearances for AC Milan, which is probably why I think he's a fullback. That's probably where he was playing for them. Then Genoa, Sampdoria, and then this team. And then this team's been the yeah most productive part of his career, really. Seems to be doing well. And at 30, again, he could be useful. For sure, Bertolacci. Let's see who else. He's not got any assists, it is just goals. I like to see somebody who's got a good count of both. We've got another guy at Trabs and Spore with that. Balotelli, he's doing pretty well. Let's look at Balotelli's scores. I'm definitely going to get a Balotelli Limited. There's no two ways about that. Uh, Balotelli. Mario! Hey, he's scoring pretty well, man. Maybe they're treating him well in Turkey. He's got five goals, two assists. Um, El Cabe. There's another guy here we've not looked at that we will look at now, but otherwise it's El Cabe Labanji. Really jumps out now, four goals and five assists. That really stands out. Um, there's an American in this league with four leagues by the name of Haji White. Or right, sorry. Um, formerly of like New York Cosmos and Schalke. Interesting little career path for him. But yeah, nobody else is particularly jumping, jumping out. We'll be getting new season cards of Diego Rossi, of course, from his move from LAFC. But the other guy we'll check out is Bozok. Or Bozok. Like Cass and Passa. I don't think I'm doing that well at the moment. But Bozok has five goals to assist, which is a nice ratio. He's 25. It seems to be a forward. And his all-round score, outside of his decisives, and he's got it once. 
do be, yeah. If it, if it's a big game where he's involved a lot, he can get the all round. But let's look into him a bit more. So he's number seventh in the league. His career, uh, French French second division primarily, and he's not even been a goal scorer there. But he's been this has been the best form of his career to date. So buying him on the strength of that is risky. Um, and what about the goalkeeper? I wonder. Does the goal because if they're getting a lot of draws, the goalkeeper obviously isn't. Uh, I thought was that? I thought I was looking at a team there rather than a club. I've looked at all the kind of teams I wanted to look at there. Yeah, sorted. Um, what does a decisive and all round score mean? So she's had like um, I'll zoom in on it. So the way SO five scores work, right, is the score that you deliver on a match day is between zero and a hundred, right? Now what that score is made up of is a mixture of their decisive score and their all-round score. There's a video on my channel explaining this, and there's a link to the median post that breaks it all down so you can see exactly what influences the decisive score and how many points you get to add into your all-round score. But basically, the decisive score starts at 35 if you start the match, and if you come off the bench, it starts at 25. And then positive actions in the match move you up or down the decisive kind of chain. So if you score a goal, your decisive score changes from 35 to 60. That guarantees you a score of 60 no matter what. If you then get a red card, your decisive score moves back from 60 to 35. The 35 score can go down if you have a negative all-round score. And what an all-round score is, is you look at all these little numbers, this is like getting half a point for a pass and half a point for completing a duel and... Five points for making an attempted assist and all this kind of stuff. That's what makes up all these. So you want somebody that can get good all-round scores because they're not, they're not dependent 